Brittany. So today's going to be a movie review and today I'll be reviewing Batman Returns. So Batman Returns was released on June 19th, 1992 and the time it came out I was still a baby and I was going to turn um, one um, later in November that year. So of course I have no memory of watching that movie at that young age. But although the movie though is is great and you know as we can see that um, it takes place you know of course in Gotham City and it shows how these two parents have their you know they expected um, you know they were expecting a child and they they did but when their baby was born turns out their baby's hands were in a way deformed because the fingers were fused um, together but of course looks like um, like a almost like Well, it's hard to describe, but because they freaked out over over that, they did what they did, and was just completely horrible. But of course, uh, as we can see, that um, there's going to be new villains of this movie, and of course. The penguin is one of them, although he does have a really sad backstory, which um, you do feel bad for him of how his parents just completely um, got rid of him like that. And yes, parents like that are completely cruel and completely insensitive and soulless. But on one hand, he was trying to do something that wasn't good. But I think it pretty much had to do with his, you know, what happened and how he wasn't really raised. Um, you know, he wasn't raised um, by his parents, you know, at all. So that could do a lot, yeah, with him doing what he was doing, that could do a lot with his upbringing and all that. And of course, there's Christopher Walken as Max Shrek, and he plays a very convincing um, bad guy. And even though he's not technically Batman's arch nemesis or anything, although he's still up to no good. And of course, um, if this story takes place, you know, sometime after Batman, and of course we don't see Vicky Bell, but we do get to see a new character, um, Selena Kyle, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, and she did perfectly for that role. And um, yeah, as we can see that there are some things that her and Bruce do have in common. And of course they, it's like they're very attracted to one another, but yet somehow they're holding things back is like somehow they want to become close but they they kind of pull away but yeah it's just a really great story and um there's one thing though that the movie does not make quite clear and that is uh with max shrek though like his intentions like what he was doing like later when he met up with the penguin um well, you know, when he met the penguin in the sewer and everything, um, the penguin did mention something about, um, what was it? He said something about tox toxic waste. What did he have to do anything with that? I mean, I, I can see that he probably did have something to do with that, but what though? Like, was he putting that toxic waste in the water? or contaminating something, I, I don't know, but that's the one thing 
that the movie does not clarify on on pretty much what well, like pretty much certain things that were going on and does not really say anything about what certain things were going on what things weren't so pretty much that was just confusing and um, I, I just have no idea and um, but um yeah, and there's one thing I'm also confused about as well, like, when Max pushed Selena out the window, and she felt, you know, she had this long fall, and, uh, so it seemed like she, she was dead, or pretty much unconscious at first, and then the cats start, you know, walking all over her, and biting her fingers, and all that, and all of a sudden, you can see that her eyes, like, are, like, twitching, you know, like, her eyelids are twitching, and all of a sudden, she opens them wide, like, all of a sudden, she just came back. So, I'm guessing, did the cats have anything to do with it? Was it some kind of, uh, some kind of power that the cats had to bring her back, or what was it? Like, I... I, I don't know. I'm just confused about that too. Like, I don't know. But it is it's very interesting to see, you know, Bissell Pfeiffer how she how she took on the role as Catwoman was just very convincing and she did so well. So yeah, I do enjoy her performance. And yeah, I'd say everyone did such a great job, and I really like how how the movie uh, has that comic book atmosphere to it, just like the first one, and I really like the cast, and I really enjoy their performances of their characters, and they just did so well, and certain things here and there that that really are just uh, really great and I have to say there's just certain parts that stand out in the movie um, yeah I like how the fact that how later when you know when they go to this party that the only two people that don't really dress up in costume is Bruce and Selena because, you know, of course, they have to dress up all the time, you know, of him being Batman and her being Catwoman. So, of course, it's like, well, why not, you know, dress up in costume, you know, like, it's like to them, it's like, no, I want to wear something different tonight at this party. So they did. Um, but yeah, I, I pretty much like that. I like uh, the connection and chemistry that Bruce and Selena had um, because they pretty much had the same theme in common. And so, you know, it's, it's almost like they went through the same thing, although differently, but yet somehow they can relate um, to that and relate to that to one another so I pretty much like that and um, yeah I just really like everything uh, about it um, yeah even the costume designs like I have to say I really like this um, like how the bat costume was designed in this one like I, I have to say because um, with the other one um, I've heard that Michael Keaton was very uncomfortable with the with the first one because he felt very uh, claustrophobic from what I heard. But I don't know. Maybe in this one, maybe there is maybe a little comfort to wearing the bat suit. But then again, maybe not. I don't know for sure. But um, yeah, I really liked how the the bat suit looked um, in this one and the Batmobile. Like, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, I do. I love the Batmobile. Um, I really liked how it was designed in this one. And, um, and yeah, I liked even Catwoman's costume, which looked like, gee, like, wow, like, you know, like, that really looked good on her. It, it did. And from what I've heard, that throughout filming the movie, she had to go through at least 60 um, Catwoman costumes, and that's a lot to go through. So, gee. But, you know, still, it's like, you can't even tell because it pretty much looks the same and it doesn't look like she went through that many throughout filming the movie so they did a pretty good job and of course they did a pretty good job with everyone's um, costume designs um, for their characters and um, you know of course and even the cast bringing their performances to life of these characters and I have to say, um, with Christopher Walken as Max Shrek, like, it just adds a bit of a imitating tone to it, almost like, okay, we gotta have something here where it's just a little bit intense, where we gotta have a character here that just makes everyone even to make the audience feel not so comfortable and just to make them feel like okay something's not right and i think maybe they did that um but yeah it does add that it does add uh, a touch of that you know uh, of um intimidation <laughs> of his performance uh, throughout that movie because yeah you know, because he's very convincing when it comes to playing the villains uh, of any movie he's he's been in. Yeah, he's very convincing playing the bad guy. So, and yeah, and with Danny DeVito, um, his performance is really good too as a penguin because he... It's like at the same time you don't like the the bad things that he's up to so it's like you're thinking like okay what are you doing you don't have to do this this is completely ridiculous one part i think was probably a bit childish for the penguin to do was to take control of of um of the batmobile and it's like okay so because you think you are now in charge, you know, uh, of the mayor and everything. It's like, okay, he thinks he can somehow take, not take, ugh. Somehow he thinks he could just take control of Batman, of his Batmobile. Like, no, like, are you kidding me? Like, no. I mean, that is a good part though, but I think the way he acted, like getting all frustrated and when he was like screaming at the camera because he no longer had control of the Batmobile, it's like, okay, that is just childish. <laughs> but still, that was quite good though. Um, and yeah, I, I really like Michelle Pfeiffer's performance as Catwoman. She she really did an amazing job and same thing with michael keaton like he does a good job playing as bruce and as batman like perfect choice as batman so um i'm glad to see that at least in this one in part two that at least he came back to play batman again because if it had been a different actor to play in batman returns the it would have been a whole different Batman movie from the first one, you know, it would have. I, I think it would have took a different turn if it was a different actor. But because he did return to play Batman again in this one, then of course things just went very well. And I think it turned out um, better. But yes, um, of course it is... Uh, superhero comic book movie but it's also a christmas movie now even some of you may think well if this if this is a christmas movie then 
why not wait until late November or December to review this movie? Well, I can't because even though it's a comic book movie and a Christmas movie doesn't mean I have to wait in December to review Batman Returns because technically it did not came out in mid fall well you know like it did not came out e um like on November or early mid December before Christmas nope this came out June 19th 1992 so but you know that's okay like you know it was different but still this is just a very good movie and yes there are certain parts that I like oh man I'm trying to think about those parts uh yes yeah, so there are just certain parts that I, I do like although there are certain parts I don't like um but I think, I think the only parts I don't like is where it goes a little dark. Like, um, okay, like what I mentioned earlier, like when Max, when he pushed Selena out the window, she had a lawn fall and she was either dead or unconscious and the cats were biting her and she came back. But you know, she came back and she's like now Catwoman. Like she was still Selena, but she came back and I think she realized, you know, like her other new identity and that was Catwoman. Um, but yeah, I just don't like that part though because it just doesn't look good. You know, him pushing out, you know, him pushing her out the window like that, like that is crazy old gee and another thing I don't like is uh, now despite of what he did to her which you know that is completely cold and like heartless you know by the same time what I don't like is how is how the way he died at the end because he was electrocuted to death um uh twice well at the same time first it was the um what do you call it it was the no it was the teaser um yeah it was the teaser she was holding along with the long cord um yeah along with the long cord that he was standing um, in front of so and because he did fell into the water because she got her whip and you know she um, when she did that her whip uh, got around him um, around his ankle and so I think she pulled him and he fell into the into the water so the way he was electrocuted by the the long cord she was holding along with the taser where it looked like she was uh, giving him a kiss although she wasn't because she was putting the taser right in his mouth along with holding the long cord that was um, sparking out you know so with that you know he was yeah he was electrocuted uh, real real bad and I think you know because of course uh, after this huge explosion of the electrocution that went on you know of the way she killed him because I think at some point she must have left you know she must have fled the scene when that was going on and you know she just took off because yeah she wasn't seen after that and it was just Bruce, you know, with his um, mask, with his mask off, when, um, when, when he saw this happening. So of course, when just when he found him, he finds him, you know, of course, dead, like being electrocuted 
to death, but this, like the way he died like that, looked completely horrible. It looked like if someone left um, food on the grill for too long and and the food got burnt bad, like, you know, like someone having a really bad barbecue because the food that, that was really on the grill got really bad because someone left it there for too long and it got burnt. So that's what he looked like. And the scary part was, is that he looked really bad, burnt to death, you know, and his eyes were popping out of his eye sockets and his hair was like sticking up. So of course that's like a scary image, you know, so that part of stuff I think went a bit too far. So of course, because since it does have a dark tone, with certain things here and there, so the movie especially with that part itself, um, yeah, I mean, I do like this movie. But, even though it's not my favorite, I, I still like it. But yes, this one is just a bit dark and it's just, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. But yes, uh, how would I rate it? I would say at least, uh, um, 90%, um, I would say 8.8 .8 out of 10, and I would, I would give it an A. And I would give it, um, uh, I would give it 4 stars. But yes, that is my rating on Vampire Returns, but yes, because, um, I, and I know for those who love the movie, do actually love that dark tone to it, because that's what really, um, sets in the movie, and that's what makes that movie, is the dark tone itself, but also, um, you know, I don't quite like the dark tone of the movie. I, I still like it. I still like to watch it. I still enjoy it. And like I said, even though it may not be my favorite, that's okay. Because I still, I still like it. Um, but yes, that is my review and rating on Batman Returns. And let me know if you love this movie. And hey, if you do, I don't blame you because I, I like it too. Like, I do. And so yeah, that is all of this review and rating. Although I gotta say, because I mentioned uh, Max's death scene in the movie and how I don't really quite like that, I, I don't know, I think that is just really graphic and yeah, really dark. So I think they just shouldn't have uh, shown that, but of course they did, like, you know, it's almost like when you wake up in the morning and you want to make toast and just when you think you want this really good toast, but then turns out the, like, uh, the thing on the toasters, like, turned all the way up and all of a sudden just when the bread, you know, comes out of the toaster, you get really bad burnt toast and it's like no one wants that and it's like it, it's just like that in my opinion but yeah I, I don't really like that no, that was just too much um but yeah speaking of which of that scene like I said I did though had a dream this very bizarre dream about how you know, his death scene, but of course, how in this dream that Max Shrek, he did die, at least for like a minute, but he didn't exactly burn to death, like Toast. In the movie, he actually looked the same like how he looked before, and 
what happened was he was laying on the ground unconscious and just when Batman and Catwoman were walking away he gets up he comes back alive and his skin is real pale like a ghost and you know he has this scary look on his face almost like the look he had when he played the Hessian and Sleepy Hollow and he had uh, electric powers you know because that's how he died so he came back with um, being electrical you know with electric powers so if you want to hear the the whole dream about that I will uh, I will definitely leave it um, I will put it right up here or is it here on the screen and for you to check it out because yeah that dream is just it was just so bizarre and I think I had it because it, I think somehow in my mind, I was just wondering, well, if he didn't die the way he did in the movie, what would have happened, let's say, if he had come back alive, or if something have, could have happened completely different? So, I think that's why I had it, because somehow, I think the dream was just showing me, like, oh yeah, if he didn't die the way he did in the movie, he probably, like this probably would have been an option like maybe a whole alternative you know different scene in the movie where he could have came back as an arch nemesis but mostly to Selena and he would be getting out to her for revenge because how she killed him just like how she wanted to kill him because of how he pushed her so it was kind of like you know so if you want to hear the whole dream on that I will um, <laughs> I will definitely put that out there I will either link it down below or put it up here somewhere in the video for you to check it out because it was so bizarre <laughs> uh, believe me I never had anything like that before but yeah that was quite interesting so it but yeah that's my review and rating on Batman Returns, so if you definitely like these movie reviews, because um, I'll be doing more, because as for those who may not know, um, I'm a huge movie buff, and I just love movies in general, like everything about it, uh, acting, editing, the cast, and the music, and story and the and you know just everything about it that does so well together so I, I just love everything about it so yeah I'm just very passionate about movies in general so yeah I'll be doing more movie reviews so if you want to check out my channel please subscribe and check out my videos and leave a like and share it and I'm losing my voice and leave a comment down below so uh that's all for today and I'll see you at the movies